yeah! You know, Maneater Mildred really is rocking kind of a donk there. Unfortunately, the whole cannibalism thing, that might be a deal breaker for me. At the very least, it would uh, play hell with my trust issues. Anyway, hello everybody, this is Un, and this is another day in Blighttown. And, uh, in the meat world, this is, uh, another day job come and gone. This time, I lasted for an entire day and a half. At least I'm learning something about my limitations, and clearly, uh, warehouse labor is not for me. I am literally not physically capable of holding up under it. Yeah, you will probably not be surprised to hear I am not a mighty, mighty food barbarian on the other side of the screen. Oh well. Well, what we're gonna do today is do some more exploring of Blight Town, as I mentioned before. And, uh, as I get started, I do have a couple of corrections from the last episode. First is that, uh, I did remember incorrectly about the Fair Lady being a one-hit point wonder. Uh, she has several hundred HP, actually, and she can take a few hits without dying. But, that of course depends on your character's attack power. Well, three mosquitoes, they usually spawn in pairs. I'm not used to seeing uh, more than two at a time. I didn't know that was possible. Anyway, moving along. Uh, the other correction, well, I suppose it's not precisely a correction, just uh, sort of a notice of me being an idiot. Uh, yeah, as was pointed out in the comments, um, using the eagle shield against Quaylog was not the smartest thing I could have done because I was so excited to get that, uh, that ugh, stability improvement. Mind the leeches. Uh, I was so excited to get that stability improvement. Man, the mosquitoes today. I really did not know they could spawn in such quantities. And I'm already getting myself in trouble with fodder enemies. That's no good. But yeah, Eagle Shield was not the best idea I could have ever had, uh, because I was so excited to get more a shield with more stability finally on me that uh, I forgot fire defense was a thing and the eagle shield is fairly terrible so yeah I was letting a lot of uh, that fire damage from Quaylog's sword right through my guard so uh, yes we and I played a thing apologize for the error so there's really not a whole lot left in Black Town, but there are a few uh, nice treasures remaining and there is uh, a whole new optional area that we can discover, although I'm not going to explore it in full at this time. There we see a treasure off in the distance. Uh, the lower area of Blight Town is kind of big and empty for the most part, so I'm not entirely certain of where I'm going, but we'll get it figured out. Try luring it out? Not a bad idea. Because, yeah, lots of leeches. Lots of leeches around these parts. But once they lunge at you, they're vulnerable for a moment or two. And you can take care of them that way. And one of the bright sides to dealing with leeches is, as you slay a lot of them, at least one or two are fairly likely to drop you some titanite. Because like the slimes, they're another enemy that can do so. Go ahead, take your best shot. Oh, he's trying to spew at me. But yeah, if they lunge at you, as long as you got your guard up, they should just bounce off your shield. They do not... Uh, tear up your stability too much. And then you're free to chop them down. Of course, if your timing is good, you can interrupt their lunge, but... I don't trust myself for that. Uh, here. What is here? I will investigate that momentarily. Got you napping, leech. What is here? I don't think there is anything here. Aside from some land, which I suppose is nice. And there goes the poison status all over again. God, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking when I tr decided to try a warehouse job after an entire adult life full of office work. But, uh, yeah, didn't work out so well. I had to quit midway through my second day because I literally could not continue. And, uh, I'm still in a, a whole lot of pain today. <laughs> not fully recovered yet, to say the least. 
Well, at least I'll know in the future. I know what I was thinking when I decided to try that. I was thinking, I need income. Oh well. Well, after I got home, I was contacted by a recruiter who seems to like me for a couple of positions he's trying to staff, so hopefully that'll work out a little better. And none of them are manual labor, so, uh, yay for that. But yeah, I'm definitely not one of those people who thinks I'm somehow above manual labor, I just literally couldn't do it. <laughs> good times, good times. But again, it's a learning experience, and I'm always willing to learn. And I'm always willing to cut down leeches, although I noticed that my uh, horizontal sweep kind of slipped right over them. That sucks. Critical chop? Works a treat. Anyway, I think that's some kind of titanite, probably, because that's what they do drop. But first, we've got a treasure right here out in the open, which is also titanite. Nifty. And I'll seem to be kind of clustered around something over there as well, so we will see what that is once we can carve our way through the opposition. Oh, Senpai noticed me. Ew. Sputum. This salad don't need no dressing. What do you got? More large titanite. Sweet. Oh, and I forgot to search that slug over there. Well, we'll do that shortly. Well, not a slug, more of a leech, but... You know, grody invertebrate, what do you want from me? What are you protecting? What are you protecting? Ah, the server! And it's a nice one, too. Dual Xeons, convenient rack mount form factor, enterprise-grade storage, and, uh, well, okay, actually, it's just a uh, curved-grade sword. But the gimmick of the server, it has a fairly straightforward curved-grade sword-type moveset. Hmm, lots of large titanite. That's good, I'm gonna need lots of that. Uh, as I was saying, uh, the server is a fairly standard curved-grade sword with the... Uh, Notable gimmick of it being that it will suck HP out of your opponents as you attack them, much like the, uh, uh whatchamacallit, the uh, butcher knife that we picked up from Manny or Mildred. Not something I will be using because it's not a halberd, but if you like your curved greatswords, that's one of the rather few actually available to you. I think somewhere around here is where I'm going to be able to access that, uh, that optional area. I think somewhere in this vague general vicinity. Get topped up. Yeah, I see an upward ramp, and an upward ramp is what I'm looking for. Some more leeches on the way, but that just means the potential for more titanite. Well, if you're not gonna jump at me, then I'm just going to stab you. You too. None shall be spared. What are you even doing? Alright, got no time for your shenanigans. Up this way, that's what I need. Wish I hadn't been quite so cheap about uh, picking up those smith boxes, because then I could improve my shield right now, but whatever. Oh boy. A chunk of wood. Yeah, needless to say, that's not all there is to find here. There's the spot. And what have we got here? Ah, double humanity. That in itself would be a nice prize. But wait, there's more! Bingo Bango, it's the Great Hollow. This is a completely optional area. There's never any reason you have to come here, but uh, 
There are treasures to be had. And I am not going to investigate the Great Hollow at this time. There's no great benefit to do so, and this is... Whoa, some stuff just fell to its death, I think. I'm just going to come in and light the bonfire for later use. Because if I descend into the Great Hollow right now, honestly, it would be kind of difficult for me to make my way back up. And we'll have a better way of doing that later. So I'm just going to leave that for the time being, but... We got a little rest and... Well... I've got a humanity lying around spare, so we'll just kindle that up and get our full, uh... 10 Estus. Very nice. Now, do I have my great combustion tuned? No, that's standard combustion. We want the good stuff. Less charges, but more punch. And back up we go, and now I am going to head back into Blight Town, maybe make a stop at that, uh, at that bonfire in the pipe that we began at. And then I will begin to make my way up the, uh, the crude elevator. And we'll see if we can get that, um, Firekeeper's Soul that can be had down here in a little side path. Getting said Firekeeper's Soul is really rather dangerous. Because there are a lot of bowgun guys around, I think there might be no less than six of them. And there are also a bunch of fire dogs hanging out with them. So, yeah, that could be a little rough. Plunging attack. Yeah, let's really overkill this, uh, whatchamacallit, leech. I'm having trouble with my English today. <laughs> oh, and completely missed. How embarrassing. Oh well, we got a little green titanite, which is used for upgrades along other paths, like, uh, fire weapons, and I believe it's used for divine weapons. And we are going to want a divine weapon eventually, so we're going to need some green titanite, even though it will not be our focus. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that optional area, and that's going to be very, very dangerous uh, because of all the blowguard... blowguard? Blowdart, guys. Don't blowguard that gun. Uh, but at the very least, just like every other blowdart guy, they do not respawn, so we can at least take a few of them down before we die and make the area easier for us on the next try. Sometimes in Dark Souls, you gotta do things in increments when the regular way won't quite work for you. Not crack spiders though, we can kill them all at once. By the way, I can't believe I missed the opportunity to comment on that crag spider getting stuck to Salad's ass in that part that uh, Alicia's wonderful intro highlighted. That was pretty special. But I guess I had my mind on survival at the time. And get this mosquito off my ass, speaking of things attached to my ass. You're alive, Greg Spider. I don't like that kind. Alrighty, into the pipe. We'll heal up, get rid of our poison. And then we will head for the exit. Or the area containing the exit, because before we exit, we've got to do our, uh, our side path with the Firekeeper Soul. Because Firekeeper Soul means a better Restus Flask. Better Restus Flask means more healing. More healing hopefully means less death. Praise that sun. We want to head sunward. I forget, how exactly do I get into that side path? I think I have to start up the, uh, up the scaffolding. But if I'm wrong, we'll just head back down. All errors can be corrected. That's why pencils have erasers. A 
Just keeping my eyeballs open because I know there are still some crack spiders on the scaffolding here. They're not too bad as enemies go, but just like any enemy, they can kill you. Well, if you can look closely, you can see there's a fire dog in the, uh... Oh, dear. That's a thing that'll happen. Yeah, dying on the uh, Blighttown elevator is fairly easy if you miss your timing or just slip off track a little bit. This is by far not the first time I've done it, and I'm sure it won't be the last, although hopefully I won't do it again immediately. But as I was saying, the, uh, the wheels that operate the uh, rickety elevator, they actually have fire dogs in them powering them, which is kind of a funny touch, like a hamster wheel. Well, maybe only the upper one has one. I thought they both did, but maybe not. Anyway, we'll see if I can't uh, find my soul pile. Oh, very good, right there at the bottom. So the only thing I lost was my unhallowed state. Be a little more careful this time. There's the dog in the wheel. We'll just... And I hit the wrong button. Unfucking believable. I was going to roll off the uh, the platform there to give myself a little more uh, distance, try and clear the landing, but uh, I hit the uh, examine and uh, pick up item button rather than the roll button. Oh my fat fingers! Luckily, the soul pile, pile is once again waiting for me at the bottom. Careful there, I almost overshot the landing, although I don't think a fall of that distance would have killed me outright, so at least there's that. Okay, let's do this correctly. Okay, good enough. Once again, I nearly overshot the landing, but I'm not dead. And I believe the stonework over here... Hello! Forgot the mosquitoes will still harrow you even up here. Yeah, you too. Moving on. Gotta look for that entrance. And once again, just as when we're on the descent, looking for ladders is a good way to figure out where you're supposed to climb up and down. Now, is this the way into the stonework? I think it might be. Oh! Some fool shot me. Ooh, that reminds me, I should put the spider shield back on. I still hear him spitting. Yeah, if there are blowgart guys around here... Did I say blowgart? Oh, yeah, plenty of them. That means... This is the way to go. And I will have to be careful because I distinctly remember there being fire dogs as well as the shooters. But yes, I think... Oh wait, no, this isn't the path yet. This is just that treasure chest. Oh, hi! Kill the damn mosquito. What do you got? Oh, the crimson set. This is actually not bad as light armor goes. And it's uh, got a bit of history, which we will find out about later when I am not in such a dangerous place. But also we get Remedy, which is a sorcery that can cure status effects. Okay, let's see, where am I going now? Yeah, I see you up there. Okay, I think that's eventually where we're going to be headed, but we're going to have to head up a little higher before we can do that stuff. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm on top of the wheel! Holy fuck, can I get down without dying? The answer is maybe, but I didn't. This is a regular fall damage jamboree. 
All right, well, before I go and get back to where I left off, let's take a moment and look at that new equipment. It's the crimson equipment and the mask of the sealer. Mask of the sorcerers who flooded New Londo to seal away the Dark Wraiths and the Four Kings who descended into Dark. We'll find out more about New Londo later. It symbolizes their resolve to keep the seal shut forever and their atonement for all who were sacrificed, but two of the three forsook New Londo upon tiring of their duty. Well, we just found what happened to one of the two departed sealers. Uh, we will find out later exactly why the sealer was found dead in Blight Town, but... Yep, that's what happened. She, uh, she left for Blighttown and apparently did not make it. But this is respectable light armor. Uh, doesn't have brilliant, uh, elemental defenses, which, which is what you really look for in light armor, but... We'll do a little style change for Old Salad. I think this stuff should be light enough that I'll be able to wear it. Yep, still got my fast roll, and we'll try out the uh, the mask. Well, I like being able to see Salad's expression, but you know, while she's hollowed, it's nothing much to look at anyway. So we'll uh, we'll rock the red wizard look for now. Okay, we are back in the game. Uh, bad news is I did lose my soul pile. Uh, so about 5,000 souls are uh, vanished into the ether. But, you know, it's all a part of the game. Lost souls are, things that the, are a thing that's going to happen sometimes in Dark Souls, and you just have to keep on keeping on. And you need to die. No toxic. No toxic toxic. Fuck me. And they're just shooting like mad over there. And you see how fast my health is going down? Yeah, that's not a good time. So we are going to Blooming Moss that right up. Jug a lug. Yeah, that's why the blow gunners are dangerous. And they are out in force here. Yeah, I believe there are six of them in total in this area. No fun at all. And I'm just going to try and get around to where I can take them out as quickly as possible and hopefully not get toxified all over again. Die, 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 die. Well, oh, replaced my clump. That's good. I'm going to try and find a little concealment there to dismiss the message. Yeah, you got nowhere to go, do you? Do I have any kind of shot at his friend? Not really. But that's okay. That's why the good lord made bows. Oh, that would not be a bow. I've still got my catalyst equipped. Ha ha ha, I'm stupid. What did my camera even do? No, it doesn't matter. Oh, I think he fell down, didn't he? Yeah, I'm not sure what exactly is the haps here. But I have an opportunity to snipe some dogs, and I'm going to do it. <laughs> not sure where he went. I hit this one. Yes. I think I'm gonna hit the wall on this guy. Yep, that's right. Not sure where that fellow over there landed. I'll have to be careful about that. I'm not sure exactly where everything is around here, because I have not done this section in a while. I did notice there was a... Uh, 
thing off to the side here. What is... Oh, there's another blue gunner for one. Make sure we get rid of him. Nowhere to run. I hear more shooting, but I don't know where he is. He's down there somewhere, huh? Alright, well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. First of all, there's something to be gained over here. Souls? Well, that'll help uh, restore our lost soul pile in time. What I'm going to do in the immediate is get on down to street level and hopefully not get ripped apart by the combination of fiery dogs and a shooter. I hear blow dart puffing, but I still can't see any darts flying at me. Hey, doggy. Holy Christ almighty! Need an Estus, need an Estus, need an Estus badly. Give me an opportunity to drink. Failed! Well, at least that's a few darters dead. Okay, let's try this again, because I came here for a Firekeeper soul, and by God, I am not going home without it. This time I'll see if I can properly use my bow to take care of the darter across the gap here, so that I don't have to worry about him when I'm ready to descend. He may toxify me, but that's why I've got clumps. Oh, he just runs down the, the ramp. Probably falls. Alright, whatever. Live and learn. And let's see if we can avoid being killed by dogs this time. Maybe if I don't aggro them with my arrows, they won't all immediately rush me on my way down the ladder. That'd be nice. Well, I got the attention of at least one of them, I think. You know, I'm going to take some fall damage with this, but it may be worth the experiment. And the plunging attack fails. And I immediately take a buttload of damage. Not good. Oh, but that helped. Good thing about dogs is they are fairly fragile. I don't think this is a real door. No, that's not a door at all. Okay. Cool. One more dog. Well, I think there might be more than one more dog, but one more dog in the immediate area, and I will swing over it like a complete idiot. Okay. Oh, you're still up there, you jerk. Is there any more? No, but there's some more dogs. I'm a little more ready for them this time. Even if I whiff a swing or two, they're gonna lose in the end. I guarantee it. Ha! Huh. Much better. And that, that is what I wanted. Now there is officially nothing more keeping me anchored in Blighttown for the time being. I am free to depart. At long last. God damn it, dog. Well, you know what? That's okay. Dying is all a part of the game. It's just a thing that's gonna happen in Dark Souls. And I'm not even gonna try and recover that soul pile. Because, you know what? 3,000 souls, I've already lost more than that and I'm sure I'll lose a lot more before this LP is done. Just can't be arsed. Because I don't want to go into the dog zone again. 
I got what I came for. And now screw you guys, I'm going home. There's an elevator up. Anything around here? No, not really. Mosquito stuck in the floor, that's sort of interesting. Oh, can't even hit him. I think they may have hit the upper bound of how far they're allowed to fly up. I think there's a key somewhere around here that is like fully replaced by the master key so I don't actually need it for anything but I'll grab it if I can find it. I do not remember exactly where that key is. Ah, I think this is it in the chest here. Yes, key to New Londo Ruins. That is how you would get out this way. Uh, if you don't have the master key, that's uh, not a shortcut to get into Blighttown here, but this would make it a one-way door out. But if you have the master key, you can come in this way as well. Now well, we might as well take a look at that before anything else tries to charge up our ass. Here we go. The ruins of New Londo were blocked off, for the cursed ghost posed danger to life and spirit, and the legends speak of a terrible dark which was sealed away. Yes, and that's uh, what those sealers were all about. And there are gonna be some big guys up this way. I haven't decided whether I'm gonna bother fighting them yet. Oh, why not? Replenish some of our souls. It's always a risk, but I feel fairly confident of my ability to take him. Oh, not if they do shit like that. And that shows you that they can do a uh, fairly good chunk of poison buildup with their clubs if you don't uh, block them with a poison proof shield. That's pretty impressive that they can toxify you with a slab of wood. Those clubs must be really soaking something rank. Oh, I see you got a friend coming. I want to take you out in a hurry, then. Just in time, too, because I just got my guard broken. These guys do hit hard. I think that trio is all there is of those guys. So we should now be free to exit Blight Town. Try luring it out, I think refers to the barbarians. Be wary of poison. True about anything involving Blight Town, <laughs> and be wary of fatty. Yeah, I suppose they are a little on the rotund side. Well, this dumps us out into the Valley of Drakes, which is sort of a central hub point. Not on the level of Firelink Shrine, of course, but it uh, joins several areas uh, and can be used to travel between them. We'll probably poke around the Valley of Drakes more in the future, but for now I just kind of want to get back to a more inviting region. I will stop for the treasure, though. And this key... That is the one that we would need the uh, key to the new Londo Ruins for, of course. But it is also totally openable for the Master Key, so I didn't really need to pick up that key. But if you didn't take the Master Key as a starting gift, or if you were not a thief, then you would need that. <laughs> it's Margaritaville for this guy, he's just hanging out. Anyway, uh, there's another docile hollow. There are a few of them around here. Uh, New Londo Ruins is where the ghosts are, and I'm not really ready to deal with those, although it is entirely possible. As long as you have transient curses to hit them with, then they are always fightable. But before I get quite into ghost territory, there are a few treasures I can gather here. So I'll do so right quick. Oh, uh, is he a friend of yours? I'm sorry for your loss. I'll take his S-Stock. The S-Stock is quite a nice thrusting sword. 
I would be making heavy use of it, I'm sure, if you guys had uh, given me thrusting swords as my weapon type of choice. Excuse me, sir. And transient curse. That is exactly what puts a temporary curse status on you, minus the uh, minus the half HP loss. And so we will be needing plenty of those to fight the ghosts when we're ready to do so. And so it's quite nice that they give you a few, a little starter set. Actually, we should take a look at those. There we are. The only way to fight back against ghosts, who are cursed beings, is to become cursed oneself. The safest method, however dreadful, is to cut an arm of the dead. So, yeah, we're just carrying around some people's hands. Oh, Dark Souls, you're such a cheery game. Is this the way I came, or is this the way back up to the surf? Oh, hey. Another goodie. Just a low-end soul item, but every bit counts, especially when I've left what, 5,000 in soul piles just lying around? Okay, that's down into the depths. Well, down into Blight Town, the depths specifically being the sewer level, but around here somewhere should be another tower, which will get us back up to the Firelink area. I think that is this one right here. Nope, actually, that's the Valley of the Drakes. I was right before. Yeah, this is not inexperience with the game, folks. Although, I grant I am not a terribly good Dark Souls player. I have been through the game about a half dozen times. I just have no sense of direction and no navigational memory. Which anyone who's been watching me for a while will be well aware of. Lost Un is kind of a trademark of my videos for anyone who hasn't been watching me for all that long. Anywho, this is going to take us up to Firelink. And this will bring us out right by the Fire Keeper. Wait a minute. The Fire Keeper is fucking gone. And where's Latrec? You know, Tulus did say something about having no further use for her now that I think about it. And, uh... Yeah, there was something about that guy that didn't quite sit right with me. Well, she has left her stuff, and a black eye orb, and yes, she's dead. Well, once again, we can take a look at that stuff. Uh, where is that? Okay, maybe it's under key items. Damn it, where's the black eye orb? Ah, there we are. Invade the world of the murderer of a firekeeper to defeat the perpetrator and reclaim the soul of the firekeeper. It keeps constant watch of the city of the gods and Orlando. Well, that is a hint for us. We will eventually be making our way to Anor Orlando, and that is where we will be able to uh, invade the murderer of the firekeeper here. Spoiler, it's Lutrec. And we can uh, avenge her death then. This is kind of inconvenient because it means the fire has gone out. So we can no longer use the bonfire here. And we cannot upgrade our Estus Flask because, of course, uh, the Firekeeper is not there to upgrade us for us. But we will deal with that in time. Makes me think I probably should have stopped by at the Fair Lady's place and upgraded my, uh, 
my Estus flask there, but oh well. Hindsight is twenty twenty. You, crestfallen guy, got anything to say about all of this? Did you ring the second bell? That is incredible, I must say. But now we have a new problem. It's noisy. It snores. And its breath is lethal. This is no laughing matter, I tell you. Huh. I can't say I know anything about that. Uh, you wait there. I'll be back. Hi, Larry. Holy mother of God. Uh, hi? Was it you who rang the bell of awakening? I am the primordial serpent, King Seeker Frat, close friend of the great Lord Gwyn, chosen undead, who has rung the bell of awakening. I wish to elucidate your fate. Do you seek such enlightenment? Uh, hi, Frat. And yeah, I guess uh, we're supposed to be the chosen undead doing this whole prophecy fulfilling kind of deal. So, uh, yeah, enlighten us. Very well. Then I am pleased to share. Chosen undead, your fate is to succeed the great Lord Gwyn, so that you may link the fire, cast away the dark, and undo the curse of the undead. To this end, you must visit Anor Londo and acquire the Lord Vessel. Hmm. So at least now we know why we're eventually going to be visiting Anor Londo. And, huh. So we are to be the successor to Lord Gwyn. And is that going to help us get rid of the Dark Sign somehow? Well, I guess we can only hope. I am pleased to see you well. Is it something urgent? As a matter of fact, Framt has another use. We can uh, feed him various things for various effects. We can feed him large titanite shards or titanite chunks to break them down into smaller bits of titanite. Not that there's any good reason to feed him large titanite shards because we can always buy small titanite shards. But you can feed him green to get some regular titanite out of that. You can feed him chunks to break them down into uh, titanite shards. And uh, that sort of thing. We can also feed him items. And that is how you more or less sell things in this game. You can't literally sell them, but you can feed them to Frant, and he will give you souls in exchange. So anything you don't need that you just want souls for, and... Wow, he will eat dung pies for 200 souls. Yeah, actually, think about that. 200 souls is exactly how much you can buy dung pies for from that woman in the aqueduct. Uh, so, a way you could technically bank your souls for an emergency is to just buy a bunch of grogans uh, at the aqueduct, and then, you know, if you need them later, like after you died, you could just feed them all to Framp. So, yeah, the nearest... <clears throat> the nearest thing Lord Ran has to a uh, banking system is shoving turds into a snake. Go figure. Anyway, uh, none of this stuff we're really going to want to get rid of. The uh, boss souls are worth a bit, but we'll save those for uh, for making weapons out of. But one thing that we can do here is... Uh, Oh, where was it? The uh, copper coin. That has no use whatsoever. The only thing you can do with coins is feed them to Frant, and he gives you a decent value on them. It does make a fucking horrible sound, though. And, uh, what else do we have here? Oh, we have lots of spare weapons, so I'm just gonna trade those in real quick, like.
All right. A couple thousand souls, no effort required on my part. Grant, you got anything else you want to impart to us? Those who seek the realm of lords must brave Sen's fortress, a deadly house of traps. Many have gone before you, but none have returned. Fate has chosen you, but proceed with caution. So, it seems uh, Sen's fortress is a bit of a proving ground that we're going to have to proceed through before we can uh, reach Anne Orlando. That would be our next destination along the main quest path, but there's some other things that we'll do first. Those who seek many fate. Okay, looks like that's it for Frant. Farewell, chosen undead. I remain here and await thee. What's this message say? Raise the sun. Fair enough. All right. Let's check in with Larry. Oh, hello there. You've been a stranger these days. Why? What? What, what spectacular pyromancy? Tell me about it. I, I have never seen anything like it. Oh, man. I always hate this part. See, Laurentius is reacting to the pyromancy we brought back from Quellana down in Blighttown. In particular, we bought uh, Great Pyro... Uh, not Great Pyromancy, uh, Great Combustion. But he'll react this way to any Pyromancy you bring back, including an updated Pyromancy Flame. Uh, now the thing is, Laurentius, he's a buddy, and he's obviously very serious about his Pyromancy, so I'd love to be able to tell him about Quilana, so maybe he could study under her too. I really hate to cockblock him, but I have to do it. I see. I suppose I was mistaken. In any case, I definitely trust you. Apologies, my friend. Forget that I said anything. Ah, Larry is such a buddy. He even takes it well. He's like, okay, you know, if you say it's nothing, then I trust you. And I hate to do it to him, but it's for his own good. Reason being, if you tell Laurentius about Quilana, he goes down into Blight Town. He doesn't make it, and you find him there hollowed. And there's not even any kind of story progression to get out of it. You just either kill him or run away from him. Uh, he doesn't drop any unique gear, and that's that. A very ignoble end for our swamp bro, and I will not have it. Okay, I'd like to buy something from him as an apology, but I really just don't need any of this stuff. So. Sorry, Larry. Again, I hate to cock block you. I know you're serious about your art, but you're better off not knowing. I promise. Goodbye, then. Be safe, friend. Don't you dare go hollow. Yeah, not going hollow. I really would uh, recommend that course of action. I always feel so bad about that. Anyway, next thing I'm gonna do is make a run on uh, Andre, because we've got some large titanite burning a hole in our pocket. And we've got an eagle shield that could do with some reinforcements. Matter of fact, I should have that equipped. Also, I'm going to buy those smith boxes because, uh, or at least I'll buy as much smith boxery as I can afford because uh, you never know when I'm going to want it again and not have it. Ah, the dear old parish, it's been a while. Hi guys, I've missed you. And I've mixed, missed crossbow guy giving up that nice easy backstab.
What's up, Dre? Well, hello again. You seem to be doing all right. Need anything forged? Now well, we'll repair our stuff real quick, like. Now, do you have any smith boxes for us, my good man? And we can afford them both. Very nice. Alright, now let's see about that eagle shield of ours. Okay, we're gonna need some more cash, but we've got some consumable souls, so that won't be a problem. That'll be enough to get started. Well, you need. Don't get yourself. Neither of us want to see you go hollow. And let's see what else we've got in the pack. Oh, we've got a proud knight. That should be worth a decent chunk. Let's see, how much titanite were we at? Okay, we're gonna need one more for the next level, and then I think we'll need three for the one after that. I'll see you in a moment. Yeah, we'll need three more shards. Okay, let's see if I can raise that much cash. Okay, so we can afford all three. That'll bring our Eagle Shield up to plus five and ready for the uh, large Titanite Ascension. But we would need a few more souls to do that, so I will hold off for the moment. But let's take a look at that. Yeah, our stability is already at 73, which is really nice. And then uh, we can get it further up to 70s with all the large titanite shards we gathered in Blight Town. Very cool. Actually, I should see if he's got anything new to say now that Sen's Fortress is open. That's a negative. I'll be seeing you then. Be careful out there. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do now, I think, is go take care of a little business in Darkroot Basin. Before Sin's Fortress, there are two optional uh, areas and events that we can uh, deal with. And the first of them is in Darkroot Basin, at the bottom of Darkroot Garden. Since this is a fairly easy area, I'll take care of it first, and we'll get a few extra souls that we can spend on those upgrades. Shouldn't take me too long to get there. I remember you. Ah, still can't one-shot you, huh? Oh well. And right this way. We've already killed the Black Knight here, so we should have a peaceful and uninterrupted descent. You know, 
I really want to see that flash of green back, so uh, let's put on the mask again. There we go. Red and green. Salad's all ready for the holiday season. And what we're going to have here uh, down in Dark Root Basin is a sort of mid-boss type of enemy. Nothing, uh, nothing truly boss caliber, but a large and fairly unique enemy that does not respawn. And we're also going to have a new regular enemy type very soon. And I think down that way is where we found the Grass Crest Shield, so this, I believe, is the right direction. Yeah, tough enemy. Try charging? I don't think I'm going to do that, though. Now, that big enemy that I talked about is probably going to take some shots at us from a distance. Dragon ahead, not strictly true, but something fairly dragon-like. But we're going to have some new regular enemies down here before we deal with that. But first off, I see a treasure up here. Ah, there we are. We're starting to see some of our new regular enemy, which are the Crystal Golems. And one of them has det detected me. So I'm going to take him on. They hit hard, but their attacks are not very swift. Cannot backstab them. They are not standard human model type enemies, or close enough. Of course, the barbarians were not regular human model type enemies, but we could backstab them. To say nothing of the armored boar. But in any case, yeah, these guys are backstab proof. So we'll just have to take them heads on. Fortunately, they're not that hard to fight unless you aggro too many of them once and they start ganging up on you. Fairly resistant to physical damage, but we do hurt them little by little. They have an AoE attack that none of them have seen fit to do yet. But other than that, they mostly just punch you with their big spiky crystal arms. All in all, very resilient and very dangerous if they gang up on you, but one-on-one, -on -one, as you've seen, nothing we can't handle. Now, down in the basin itself, we have our big, unique, vaguely dragon-like, if not quite a dragon enemy. And like I mentioned it was going to, it's taking shots at us, which it will do as soon as it's within range of noticing you. But as you probably noticed, it can also shoot the golems. Ah, that hurts like a bastard. Thought I was in decent concealment there, but I was wrong. But it did take out the golem for me, so there's that. Took that one on my shield, fortunately. The good news about... Oh, wow. The rock does not protect me. Good to know. Anyway, as I was trying to say when I got shot, the good news is once we get close and within range, it will stop shooting at us and start trying to melee at us, which it is very bad at. Oh, that was not good for my health. Quick jug. Try not to take more... Oh, for the love of Pete. Okay, I forgot about that. Because I forgot to rest at Andre's bonfire, that, uh, that took me all the way back to the last bonfire I properly rested at, which was in Blighttown. But, silver lining! That means I can go upgrade my Estus Flask. It has been some time, truth be told. I thought you had perished. The Witch of Isolith, please, do not speak of her. I abandoned my mother and sisters, and fled to this land. Now I roam these parts, feigning ablution, and pretending to seek answers. Hmm. So it seems that, uh, there's some complicated emotions regarding uh, Quelana and the Witch of Isolith, who, of course, is her mother. Pyromancy. 
easy as the art of invoking and manipulating. Or I would hate. Pyromancy is the. But I would hate. Yep, nothing else from her for now. Just thought I'd stop in while I was on my way to the fair lady. No luck. Hmm. Well, young pupil, you must have patience, but do not keep me waiting much longer. Ah, fair lady. It's been a while. You feeling any better? Oh, my dear sister, don't mind me. It does not hurt terribly. Ah, oh, the poor dear. Well, um, I got this firekeeper soul, you see, and, uh, well, would you mind? Okay, we have now got our Sunny D at plus two, so that'll be nice. Yes, hopefully, hopefully someday we'll get you all better and you can do just that. Peggy, how have you been? Oh, hello. A pleasure to see you again. But don't neglect the fair lady. She needs some company. Near us lies the ruins of the legendary city of Isolith. There, the molten giant watches over the flame of chaos. Our fair lady and Mistress Quaylark fled from the ruins. I do not know the details, and I do not ask. The Molten Giant, eh? You may remember we briefly stopped in the Demon Ruins in order to uh, get ourselves infected by one of the hostile Egg Burdened. And uh, you might have seen, if you were sharp-eyed, something that looked like fiery tentacles waving off in the distance. That would be the Molten Giant. Unsurprisingly, we'll be meeting a little more closely with him later. Okay, nothing new from these guys for the moment. I will see you back at the basin. of Isolith, was one of the primeval lords. Her power came from the soul that she found near the first flame. She focused this power to light a flame of her own, but she failed to control it. The flame of chaos engulfed mother and my sisters and molded them into deformed creatures. Only I escaped, and now I am here, but my mother and sisters have been in anguish since. I beseech you, free mother and my sisters from the flame of chaos. I cannot do it myself. I lack the strength and the bravery. But you, I realize what I am asking. But please, free their poor souls. Mother's ambitions were misguided, no doubt. But surely a thousand years of atonement is enough. That's what I've been trying to get Quilana to say to us. The, uh, important key to the backstory of herself and the other sisters. It seems that, uh, after the battle with the Everlasting Dragons, the Witch of Isolith attempted to light a new flame. And, uh, it didn't go quite right. The flame engulfed her and some of the other sisters, and that is why, uh, 
Quelog and the Fair Lady are transformed into these chaotic spider creatures. But uh, Quelana escaped, but the witch herself was also transformed, and so we are to uh, track her down and put her out of her misery. And so I guess it's not entirely a terrible thing we did to Quelog, but I'm not going to kill off the Fair Lady. That's just a bridge too far. Anywho, so now we know what happened to uh, the sisters and uh, what the story is there. So, uh, yeah. Just wanted to stop back in with that. I'm going to head back to the uh, basin, but first I'm going to stop off at Andre and do some additional upgrading. I'll see you then. Okay, back to the parish. And I did stop off at the bonfire this time, just in case the worst happens. Well, let's up that eagle shield to the next tier. And then I think we have enough large titanite to re reinforce it another level or two. Alright, Eagle Shield is clear up to plus eight. And that's as far as we can go until we get some more large titanite shards. But that's pretty good. Alright, back to the basin. See you in a moment. Okie dokie then. Here we are again, and hopefully things will go at least as well with the golems, and much better with the hydra. If I can just get into melee range with the thing, it will stop shooting its massively damaging water magic at me, and will become a hell of a lot more manageable. Nothing new about these guys. Reasonably manageable. Except there is the AoE, which uh, I believe does some magic damage. I think that's why it penetrated my shield partially. Well, actually, no, this is the Eagle Shield after all, and since the nerf, it doesn't have 100% physical block. So physical attacks are going to still do some damage to me. But at any rate, yeah, they just smash the ground and cause an AoE Crystal Blast to appear. Nothing too dangerous as long as you uh, watch your distance. And you can always uh, block most of it with your shield, or potentially all of it with your shield, if you don't have something that's going to let some of that damage through. And the Hydra has noticed me, but hopefully it'll help with the golems a bit. I'm going to treat its magic with a great deal of respect. Because I saw how readily it nuked me last time, and we don't want a repeat of that. Fortunately, its aim seems to be a little bit off today. I had to go and open my mouth. Okay. Just one more crystal guy to take care of, and then uh, it's just us and Mr. Many Heads. Ow. Don't kill me before I can recover, thank you. We're getting lots of nice healing out of our newly upgraded Estus, and it appears the golem was damaged. And we got a chunk for our troubles, too. Very nice bonus. Not that I'm going to be using a lot of blue titanite, I don't expect, but... Hey, better to have it than not have it. Okay, I swear my roll button didn't work there. Chug, 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 chug. Very good. Oh, God. Chug, 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 chug. This is really embarrassing. Okay. Now it should start trying to melee me, which is not going to work out very well for it, because that is... No! No, you were supposed to melee me. There we go. 
This is much more blockable and it leaves itself very vulnerable afterward. So now it's really just a matter of time of tanking is necessary and gradually working down its many heads. Still want to be a little careful with my stamina. One head down. That's a good start. Up oh, there goes another one. None of that. We want you to resume your melee. You now the thing that's not going to kill me. And I'll grab this treasure eventually when it's convenient for me to do so. Alright. Sorry guys, this fight's a little boring if you uh, do it in the straightforward fashion, but not really much else for it. Lucky for me, the attacks are going over my head at this range, even when it decides to do them. You can barely see it because it's dark, but there is a drop-off there, so I can't just wade out into the water and attack its body. Shit, I think I completely missed. There we go. Looks like one of them's coming down over this way. Oh, clumsy of me. Okay, that means there's nothing left but this last goofy head that always goes way off to the side and never even comes remotely close to hitting you. So, I believe what I'm going to do is just arrow the thing the rest of the way to death. Guys, this just kind of takes a while. No real getting around it. Okay, Hydra is dead. It will never be back. It does not respawn, and we get a Dragon Scale, a very healthy Soul Bonus, and a Dusk Crown Ring. And the ring in question. Uh. 
This magic crown-shaped ring was granted to Princess Dusk of Ulasil upon her birth. The ringstone allows its wearer to cast additional sorceries, but, the cast, but at the cost of one half of HP. So yeah, if you want some extra sorcery charges, that's one way of getting them, but uh, quite a cost. And here we find the knight set of equipment. And now that the Hydra's dead, there's a very well-hidden bonus that uh, we can do if we head up along the left side of the basin. Because the water is actually shallow enough here that we can do that without plummeting to our death. Again, if you look closely, you can kind of see where the... Uh, where the shallows drop off, and uh, if you walk beyond that, you will drown. But as long as you stick close to the left wall here, you'll be safe. Hmm. It is looking like our bonus may not have actually spawned. I think I need to quit out of the game and then restart. So bear with me for just a moment, please. Alright, that's what I was looking for. The Gold Crystal Golem. This thing spawns after the Hydra is dead, and apparently you have to zone out of the area or restart the game in order for it to finally uh, materialize. But it's here now and we can fight it. It's a little tough to fight because we're in the water, not on nice dry land, which uh, greatly reduces our mobility. And it is tougher than your average golem. But we can still take it. It still has the same moveset, it just has more health and hits harder. Seems to be a bigger fan of its AoE attack, too. A really big fan of its AoE attack. But little by little, its larger than average health bar is getting whittled down. And hey, there's a lady inside. That's unusual. So, it is thou who rescues me. Most gracious, I am deeply obliged. I am Dusk of Ulysseo. I come from an age long before thine. I cannot stay here for long. So, before I disappear, allow me to ask one thing. My home, Ulysseo is the home of ancient sorceries. My hope is to pass this profound knowledge to thee with thine approval. Would this be of assistance to thee? Hell yeah. My heart felt thanks. I am pleased beyond words. Then I shout, engrave my signature. If thou art in need, pray summon me from my signature. It seems that my time is done. May the great flames guide thee. Huh. Cool. So, uh, that Princess Dusk of Ulysseel, whose name we saw on the Dusk Crown Ring, is someone we actually get to interact with. Nifty. I believe if I continue to follow the trail here, we will eventually find Dusk's belongings. Don't remember exactly where those are, so I'm going to be careful I don't run off the cliff. But I do believe they're around here somewhere. Also, Dusk's homeland of Ulysseel, that's going to play very more uh, very much more heavily into the DLC areas.
Well, how about we just pretend that never happened? I know Dusk's equipment is around here somewhere, but maybe I have to do something else to get it to spawn? I'm really not sure. I'll check that before the next video and we'll take care of it then. Anyway, uh, rescuing Dusk and talking to her uh, will cause this summon sign to appear. And it is a unique summon sign in that it can be used even when you are in hollow form. You don't have to be revived to human. So let's uh, go ahead and summon Dusk. Hello again. I am Dusk of Ulysseo. It is an honor to see thee again. I shall follow thy wishes. And we can learn a gesture from her. So now we have the proper bow. was trapped within the crystal golem. From my home I was taken, banished to a plane of distortion. It was there that thou came to my rescue, long after I had relinquished all hope. So gleeful was I. My faith reneweth. The sorceries of Ulysseel differ from the magic of thy mage. It is difficult to explain. Ulysseel's sorceries are... What doth one say? <laughs> They're somewhat of an approximation. Thine sorceries are more straightforward, negating all but thyself. Dost thou not find some fascination in these discrepancies? The sorcery, it is born of thine. Dost thou not... Well, there's a little more information about Ulysseel and the magic thereof. Uh, like I was saying before, uh, there's not too much about that stuff besides this conversation with Dusk herself in the base game, but in the Prepare to Die edition and for the consoles in the DLC, uh, we'll be having a whole lot more to do with, with uh, Ulysseel. But in the meantime, we'll just see what she has for sale. Hidden Body, which is magic that will turn you nearly invisible, just as it says. And then there's Cast Light, which is also fairly straightforward. It uh, illuminates dark areas. Repair also does what it says on the tin. Repairs your equipment. And there's Chameleon, which is an amusing spell that turns you into an inanimate object. And can sometimes hide you from invading PvPers if they don't know where items are supposed to be. Sort of like the cardboard box in Metal Gear Solid. And finally, Hidden Weapon which makes the weapon that you're holding invisible. Potentially handy if you don't want someone to see what you're packing. And she also sells the Ulysseel Ivory Catalyst, which is the equivalent of the Thurlin Talisman, just for magic instead of miracles. It's uh, most effective if you're at low intelligence, but at high intelligence, like if you're a dedicated mage character, then other talisman scaling is going to pass it up. But since we're probably not going to be buffing intelligence at least any time soon, this is probably worth it. If thou art in need, pray summon me again. I only wish to be of some genuine assistance. May the flames guide thee. Well, thank you, Dusk. You've been very helpful already. And I have run way over time, and even after editing out all my stupid deaths and so on, I think this episode will still run somewhat long. So I think it's a good time to call it a day. As always, uh, I have greatly enjoyed the company, even if I've made an absolute fool of myself on several occasions. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Please stay tuned after the video fades out for the uh, Patreon acknowledgements. And also, there's an additional way now that you can make a one-time payment if you're interested. Just like Patreon, it's never an obligation, but always appreciated. Take care, and I'll see you next episode. Dear viewers, I am pleased to report that YouTube has invited me to participate in their new fan funding program. Those of you in America, Mexico, Australia, and Japan, 
who would like to make a one-time donation can do so by going to my channel and clicking on the support button off to the right, as indicated by the green arrow here. Once again, this is not expected of anyone, and I'm glad just to have you folks along for the ride. However, if you would like to toss a couple bucks in the tip jar without signing up for a monthly, here's your chance. Fan funding is a very new feature, and is only accessible to folks in the aforementioned countries so far, but I imagine they'll be rolling it out everywhere eventually, once all the legalities are worked out. And, on the Patreon side, I would like to once again thank all of my generous contributors, with special thanks to Justin Carpenter, Nolden, Anonymous Benefactor, Canis, Daniel Barkalo, Zangamarth God of Chicken and Fries, Joseph Coco, Johnny Millennium, Chibi UFO, Patrick Bellinger, and Misha Van Doren. It really helps out a lot, especially during the ongoing job hunt, and I really, really appreciate it, folks. Thank you, and see you soon.